Hello everybody, and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the current generic ballot polling, and what's going on in this country right now, nationally. So, in case you hadn't heard, for the first time since last year, the Democratic Party holds a lead in the generic ballot polls. This means that, on average, voters want Democrats in Congress more than Republicans for the first time since mid-November of 2021. This is a big deal because it really shows the Democrats have climbed back and leveled out the playing field since Roe fell and um, since the Republicans started to gain momentum after winning the Virginia governor's race last year. And this is kind of a turning point for me. And again, that doesn't mean this is the last turning point, that it's guaranteed to end, you know, that November is going to be a Democratic um, favorable election. But what it does mean is that we've seen a good amount of turning points so far this year. You could make an argument that it kind of started last year where the Republicans flipped the Virginia's, uh, Virginia governor's mansion and came very close to winning New Jersey. And that kind of you know sent shockwaves throughout the nation because ultimately the fact that Republicans were able to win back Virginia, a state they hadn't won in 12 years prior to winning it in 2021 was a big deal. And arguably even a bigger deal is that they came within three or within 4% of beating Phil Murphy in New Jersey, who was supposed to be winning by, you know, more than double what he ended up winning by. And so the Republicans had a very good night uh, last in November 2021. And that was, I think, the first turning point. That was the moment where, you know, undeniably the Republicans had the momentum where the Republicans were doing very well and where we saw a lot of people start to, you know, kind of start saying, you know, this is a red wave. This is a year where Republicans be doing very well. And I, you know, to me, I started believing in, in kind of the red wave, the Republican midterm around July, August, September 2021, so midway through the year. But what we saw in November further corroborated that for me, and I was very much on the Republican train up until pretty recently, and I've kind of hopped off the train to a certain extent. You know, metaphorically, I'd say half my body's still on the train because I do think that the Republicans are going to have a fairly solid year in November no matter what. But I think that when you take a look at the turning points after Virginia, you, you could argue, you know, the, the Biden approval really starting to come at, in. Well, like, first of all, I think the war in Ukraine in, in uh, February could have been a boost to the Democrats and Joe Biden could have uh, given them a chance to have better leadership. But ultimately, what we saw was that uh, that didn't really happen. I don't think it was, you know, really an error on Biden's part, politically speaking. But I do think that a lot of Americans, while they liked he was supporting Ukraine, didn't rally around him the way some might have expected or hoped. And so that was kind of a missed opportunity for Democrats, although, again, I think we could easily make the argument that there wasn't really much they could have done either way. So, you know, it, maybe it was just a bad situation for them to begin with. So the Ukraine war is another turning point. Another potential turning point could have been in, you know, March, April, May, when we started to see Joe Biden's approval in free fall. You know, he went from 40, you know, he was at, I think, in August 2021, he was disapproved of by the country for the first time. By the time that the Virginia governor's race rolled around in November, I think he was at a, a 43 or 44% approval rating. It was pretty stable at that until late April, early May, when it just collapsed. And he fell to, I think, 38% as recently as a couple of weeks ago. And so what we saw was things were looking really bad for the Democrats, and especially after the leak, not the official ruling, but the leak from the court that Roe was going to be overturned, and we didn't really see too much of a movement towards the GOP, I think the Democrats were really freaked out because they didn't know what they were going to be doing. They didn't know whether they were going to be able to make a comeback. And after Roe actually, like, officially uh, was overturned, I think then we started to see the Democratic momentum come. And that was, I think, the real turning point. Some people said that the leak was the turning point, but the leak didn't really change much to me. What, what actually changed was, I think, the actual ruling, because I think we saw laws coming into effect. We saw, you know, horrific stories like the 10-year-old girl in Ohio or these women who've had to travel across, you know, whether you're pro-choice or pro-life, it's it's just still a very sad situation of, you know, women having to travel across the country, having to travel, you know, it, it, just to get an abortion. And so um, I think that for a lot of people who have been voting Republican, it was kind of a wake-up call. You know, a lot of people really upset with with the GOP with their Supreme Court nominees because ultimately this is a deeply unpopular thing. In the surveys, you know, six, ranging from 60 to 75% of Americans are pro choice. And the Republican Party, whether you think it's true or not, is tied to the pro life movement. The Democratic Party is a more pro choice party, the Republican Party is a more pro life party, 
And when you make abortion the number one issue, the Democrats are in a clear majority on that singular issue. And that has propelled the Democrats to a solid uh, rally in the generic ballot. Like I said, if you look at 538 Senate model, the Democratic Party surged. They were at they were underdogs to win the Senate before Roe was overturned. Now they have a nearly 60 percent chance of winning the Senate. And when they when, you know, for example, when 538 started their forecast, the Republicans had a 60 percent chance of winning the Senate. Now the Democrats were in that position. Now they're in the driver's seat. And on the day that Roe was overturned, the Republican Party, I think it was June 23rd or 24th, the Republican Party had a 53% chance of winning the Senate. They now have a 41% chance of winning the Senate. This has just been a complete surge in Democratic support, a complete rally for the Democratic Party. We're seeing it everywhere, you know, whether it's the 538 Senate forecast, whether it's in Joe Biden's job approval, which has gone up by about 2.5% since the day Roe was overturned, or the generic ballot, which on June 24th, which I believe was the day that Roe was overturned, the generic ballot sat at... R plus 2.3. And so I'll find it right here. That has been about a two and a half point swing towards the Democrats. And while that may seem insignificant, like just just think about that for a second. A two and a half point swing, the 2020 presidential election across every state would have meant Donald Trump would be our president right now. A two and a half swing across every state in the 2016 presidential election would have given Hillary Clinton the presidency. And on a map like the House map, where there are so many individual districts, and there are going to be a ton of districts divided with or decided within that two and a half percent margin, a two and a half point shift towards the Republicans could give the Republicans control of the House. A two and a half point shift towards the Democrats could give them control of the House. So, uh, I you know I think that the R plus two point three number it wasn't even as high as some of these other numbers we saw, like you know nearing R plus uh, three, you know it was mid to high twos. That in all has been a you know about a at best an R plus two point or a, a D plus two point eight swing uh, again meaning that the Democrats have improved by about two point eight percent since their low point I think back in February March or April sometime in the late winter or early spring and so they now have the lead again for the first time since the exact date was November fifteenth twenty twenty one they're now up by point one percent so it's functionally a tie again um, functionally you know no party has a major advantage here but. The fact the Democrats have caught up to this point is really impressive. It's quite a rally for them. And I think it comes because there are a lot of pro-choice Republicans who are rethinking their vote this year. I'm not saying that every pro-choice Republican is going to vote Democrat. You know, that that would be uh, ludicrous. But what we're seeing in every poll is that Democrats are actually outrunning Joe Biden with white college-educated voters. And most pro-choice Republicans are college-educated voters. And most Republicans, again, are the majority of the GOP is made up of white voters. So again, the average pro-choice Republican voter is probably a wealthier college educated white voter who probably lives in the suburbs who has been voting Republican for other reasons and hasn't had abortion top of mind, but is still pro-choice. I'm sure you can imagine that voter. I'm sure, you know, I know many of those voters. I'm sure you know many of those voters. Um, You know, just try to imagine that voter. And so a lot of those voters are going to stick with the GOP. There's no denying that. A lot of them are just going to stay with the Republicans through and through. But some of them are going to be voting Democrat this year because for the first time since the 70s, abortion is not legal in every state. There are restrictions and there are trigger laws that have been put into place in some big states like Wisconsin, Michigan, Arizona, Texas, too, is going to be a big one um, where we're seeing abortion either restricted or being made entirely illegal. And what we're seeing is that this is a very unpopular thing. In Kansas on Tuesday, uh, voters over – and this is deep red Kansas. You know, This is a state that Trump won by 15 points. In deep red Kansas, voters rejected abortion by – re, sorry, rejected banning abortion by more than Donald Trump won the state by. The, uh, the, the proposition was should the Constitution of Kansas be amended to remove the protections of abortion? No, which is essentially the pro-choice side won with about 58% of the vote. It was a very strong showing for the pro-choice movement in Kansas. And what we also saw on that day was that registration among Democrats was up like exponentially because a lot of Democrats who hadn't been politically, you know, tuned in were coming out to vote to keep abortion legal in Kansas. Uh, you know, specifically women, I think women, like female registration was up like by, by incredible numbers. I don't know the exact amount, but female registration specifically was up. And I'm, I'm guessing, you know, we don't have an exit poll, but I, you know, I would think that women overwhelmingly voted in favor of keeping abortion legal in Kansas. And so this is a deeply unpopular thing. And it's, it's on the ballot in a state like Michigan, where there's literally a referendum on to keep abortion legal. It's probably going to win um, in Michigan. I would be very, very surprised if Michigan votes to make abortion illegal. That would be stunning to me. 
And this is a big turnout booster for the Democrats, and it helps statewide Democrats like Gretchen Whitmer, like, you know, in the House, like Hillary Shulton, um, uh, Dan Kildee, Alyssa Slotkin, Carla Malinga. And so what we're seeing is that abortion is both on the ballot in terms of propositions, but also on the ballot in terms of the candidates that we're voting for, the candidates that we're seeing in these races, both Republicans and Democrats. And I think a lot of moderate Republicans might start to split their ticket or even vote Democrat just to get this this issue out of the way. Because again, abortion was not an issue in 2020, was not an issue in 2018, wasn't an issue in, until the early, you know, uh, since the early 70s. But it's now an issue, and I think that's going to shake up our politics for um, this year because, you know, the Republicans are on track for a red wave midterm. And now they're in a much more, you know, even battleground spot where they're going to have to do a lot of hard work to win these seats. And again, when you look at the polls in these Senate races, which again, I don't, I know they don't tell the entire story, but when you take a look at the polling in a state like Arizona, we don't have an, well, we do have an average, actually, they added that. Good job, 538. I didn't know that. But Mark Kelly is up by eight and a half percent over Blake Masters. That is a disaster for, for the GOP. They should be, they should be on track to flip the seat by a couple of points. And right now they're losing it by eight and a half in the polls. And again, I know it's early. I know things can change. Things certainly do change, but you never want to be down by eight and a half percent with only three months to go until the election. If this were in April or May and it was, you know, only a couple of polls, yeah, sure, it wouldn't be a reason for the GOP to be concerned. But they are three months out from an election in which, you know, we're over a month away from this ruling. We're nearly we're a month and a half away from it, and Democratic energy hasn't actually faded yet. So either Democrats are gonna to have to get a lot less energized real quick, or this is, you know, what we're looking at right now. And even again, I just want to point this out, even a Republican poll has Mark Kelly winning the Senate race and close to 50%. So just going to point that out. Now, next state, Georgia. Again, critical Senate race here. Right now, Raphael Warnock leading Herschel Walker by about 3%. Georgia is a very pro-choice state, very um, very socially liberal, especially in the suburbs. And there are a lot of voters that are going to vote for Brian Kemp, maybe, that Herschel Walker needs to win that are not going to vote for him anymore due to this ruling by the court. You know, go to a state like the state of, I, I, I mean, I don't, uh, New Hampshire, I don't think we have an aggregate yet, but we do see Maggie Hassan leading nearly every poll except for this one UNH poll. New, New Hampshire is a very socially liberal pro-choice state. I would expect Maggie Hassan to be benefiting from this um, energy boost on the Democratic side. North Carolina, Ted Budd only has a lead of about a point, which has narrowed up significantly from when he was ahead by six back in the spring. So Sherry Beasley is really starting to close the gap here in North Carolina. Not saying she'll win, but she is closing the gap. Ohio. Tim Ryan has his biggest lead of all time. He's up by over 4%. And again, I don't like the polls in Ohio. They underestimated Trump by about you know seven per, 6 or 7% in 2020. So take this with a grain of salt. But again, Tim Ryan up by 4% in Ohio. The Republicans are starting to get really concerned about this race. Uh, you know, it, it's J.D. Vance is a bad candidate. I think a lot of the statements he's made are alienating to a lot of voters. But quite frankly, it does seem like Tim Ryan has something special here. And it does seem like this is galvanizing a lot of Democrats who might not have been in tune before. Pennsylvania is the big one. Right now, John Fetterman up, up by nearly 11% over Dr. Oz. This has just been a disaster for the GOP. Pennsylvania is you know, a race that I have expected them to hold in the past. Stay tuned for the new next Senate prediction because I'll talk about Pennsylvania a lot in that video. But really, they're down in the polls in every critical Senate race except for North Carolina right now. North Carolina should be a state that shouldn't even be critical. The GOP should be winning the state by 5 6%. It should be off the board, really. And so... Uh, the fact that the Republicans are still having to spend money in North Carolina, Ohio, still trying to, you know, work from, you know, come back from behind in states like Pennsylvania, Georgia, Nevada, Arizona, not good for them. Really, really not good for them. And I think that they'd be in a much better spot had this issue not uh, been put into the public um, uh, sp sphere, of inf uh, sphere of interest once again. Now. I do, for some context, want to take a look at some generic ballot polling from recent wave midterms. So we'll be looking at 2018 and 2010, 2018 being a blue wave, 2010 being a red wave, and seeing what conclusions we can draw, what we can take a look at here. So in, uh, the, first of all, the most common argument I hear whenever I point out the Democrats are doing well right now is that, oh, it, it, it doesn't matter. The Republicans are going to gain September, October. The Republicans are going to surge again. They'll be up by five points nationally on Election Day, right? And that could happen. It's it's not out of the realm of possibility, but what are the odds of that happening? Not super likely as it stands today. So the, the common argument for this is that waves build up over time. Is that, you know, at, at the start, it, it looks like it's a close race, but then eventually the wave grows in momentum. 
uh, you know, starting in July, August, September, and then by November, one party is completely in control. And the thing is, in 2018, that didn't really happen. The Democratic Party's best month uh, heading into the 20, uh, 2018 midterms was January 2018, which was the very beginning of the year. And they were up by double digits nationally that month. And, you know, it, it kind of stayed the same throughout the entire year. But by November, they were only up by about 8%, which was, a, you know, I think a 3% decrease from January. Um, and actually, we did see a bit of a narrowing by spring. You know, in, in May, it was Democrats were only up by 6%. Um, then once we got into the summer, it was 7%, kind of stayed around there. Um, then by September, it was 8%, 9%, and then, you know, kind of stayed around 8%, stayed around there. And then on election day, it was 8.5%. So it was pretty stable. Again, there was a little movement, but it was, it was pretty stable, ultimately, what we saw here. And ultimately, the Democrats were ahead by 8.5% uh, eight, eight on election day, and they won, I think, by that exact amount. Uh, 538 nailed it in 2018. So, you know, I... um. I think that the argument that waves build up is kind of refuted by 2018, where the wave kind of died down a little bit and stayed stable after the spring. Um, and so again, like if you're a Democrat at the, you know, in, in May or June of 2018, you, you know, you're saying we're up by 6% nationally, but we'll be up by 10 or 11 on election day because waves build up. You would have been wrong. Um, now, if you go to RCP, look at the 2010 midterms, you'll see a similar thing. Again, at, at, at this time on, you know, what was it's August 6th, I think, or August 7th, I don't even, I don't even know, to be honest with you. I think it's August 7th, though. But anyways, let's, let's just say it's August 7th. Uh, the Republicans had a lead of about 6% on August 7th. And yeah, by the time we hit November, it was a nine point lead. So yeah, the Republicans did gain by a little bit, it went from six to nine. So fairly solid um, uh, months for the Republicans. But the issue is, the Democrats actually didn't really move much, you know, in um, on August 7th or whatever the day we chose, Democrats were at about 40.5% support. They ended at about 41% support. So they didn't really move. The Republicans, however, on August 7th, again, on the state where they were up, they were at 46.5% on August 7th. They finished with 50.5%. So they surged while the Democrats kind of stayed the same because undecided voters came to the GOP and, and the Republicans held on to their energy. The Democrats did not, obviously. The issue is that 2010 is not 2022. In, 20, in, in, in uh, 2010, there wasn't this big debate about abortion. There wasn't, you know, there weren't Democrats who were turning out for primary after primary, referendum after referendum in Washington, Kansas, Michigan. And these, you know, it, it, and what we're seeing is the Democrats are actually beating their turnout from 2018 in some of these uh, primaries, by the way. So uh, I think that in 2010 and 2014, the Republicans clearly had the enthusiasm factor on their side, right? And now what we're seeing is, you know, the Republicans might have had the enthusiasm factor a few months ago, but Democrats are still turning out. Democrats are, you know, actually beating their 2018 numbers in some primaries. And I don't really see either party as having the enthusiasm uh, advantage right now. I think the Democrats are really mad about this court ruling. The Republicans are really mad at Joe Biden. And they're both going to turn out, I think, a lot in November. And I think that's going to result in kind of a wash. I think the Republicans are going to have a better year than they did in 2020, certainly better than they did in 2018. But I don't see, you know, the Republicans winning the generic ballot by nine points like they did in 2010. I don't see the Republican Party um, having, you know, flipping, what, was it six or seven Senate seats and gaining 65 House seats? No, I, I think the Republicans are going to have, you know, gains, but I don't think they're going to be wave gains. I think they're going to be kind of a, a red ripple rather than a blue or than, than a red wave. So that's where I stand today. Again, that could change. We'll, I'll update you on where the polls are, but as of right now, the Democrats are ahead. And, uh, you know, I think the fact that they're still in the game this late, to me, says a lot about where we are as a country and where the enthusiasm lies. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Tell me what you thought in the comment section below. Um, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.